Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. And Jerry, we've got a lot to talk about. We want to thank Dale Jago, Denfeld head coach, who joined us last week. And Denfeld is in the playoffs. Yeah, they got a big game starting tonight. We're producing the show on Tuesday, and this is Tuesday. And at 515 at the Heritage Center, they play Ely. And Ely got to that game by a playing game. They beat International Falls on Saturday night, four to three. But the thing about this is the first time Ely ever beat International Falls in 63 games. Way to go, Timberwolves. Yeah, that's amazing to me. That is, that's great. That's amazing. I bet a lot of people are happy in Ely. <laughs> well, will this be enough to uh, pump up the uh, Timberwolves of Ely to beat Denfeld? I think the uh, Denfeld Hunters are going to be too strong playing at home. No, the Hunters will beat the Timberwolves. That's my prediction. Okay, all right. Uh, t- speaking of Denfeld, uh, I didn't get a chance to see how they finished out the season, but uh, again, we had Coach Dale Jago here. Uh, what did they do? They went on to, Thursday uh, night. They beat Duluth Marshall. Okay, and that ended yeah. the regular season. Right. Okay. So they ended the season right, and so they're right. They're ready to go in the playoffs. And hey, on uh, I think they'll get by this first game, and most likely, I think they're going to be playing Greenway in the semis at eight o'clock Saturday night at the Amsoil Arena. Oh. And that's a big day. That's one of the big days in section playoffs in boys hockey because we got the seven double A semifinal games at noon and two, and then the seven A games are at six and eight. Okay. So that's a big day for hockey fans in the Northland. Denfeld's had a good season. Uh, can they keep it going? Uh, I mean, you think they'll get by uh... Uh, Ely, which, uh, or rather, uh, yeah, Ely, which they probably right. should. I think they're going to have a tough time if it's Greenway. Yeah. But the if, fifth, if, 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 um, if it's not. But I how mean, huge of a win would it be for that program if they can beat Greenway? And uh, that would make, that would get them to state. No. To the section. The, to the section. To the section finals. Gotcha. Because uh, I think Hermantown will get to the finals. I don't think anyone's going to upset them before that time. That's why Hermantown should move up to Class A to let teams like Greenway and Class AA. Class AA to let teams like Greenway and uh, Denfeld have an opportunity. At least one once every five years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. I see. Okay. Keep the battle running. <laughs> uh, Duluth East. What's their status? Okay. Hey, big news yesterday at Duluth East. Their captain and leading scorer, Ryder Donovan, signed his letter of intent. To Wisconsin Badgers. Oh. Yeah, his friend Luke Lamaster is going there, so I think that was one of the big reasons, and he likes the coaches there. Yeah. So the only other option I saw was UMD, stay home, you know. Yeah. But, uh, hey, yeah, wish him the best of luck, and yeah. I'm glad he stayed in high school and enjoyed himself and had fun with his friends this senior year. Sure. Because a lot of kids, when they... They're real good. Uh, colleges want them to go play juniors first at their senior year. Well, he's going to be uh, playing in the Big Ten, and that's going to give him uh, some, you know, maybe some more exposure than he might get uh, elsewhere. Who knows? But uh, but um, Duluth East plays um, Duluth Marshall tonight in the quarterfinal game. This is Tuesday, the 19th of February. And then if they get by that game, they're going to play the winner of Grand Rapids and Cloquet. <laughs> Grand Rapids is playing well. Yeah. Kind of funny. Cloquet is the three seed. Rapids is the six seed. And Rapids beat Cloquet last week. So, okay. who knows? They played they play tonight, too, those two teams. So. They played well against Hermitone a uh, week before yeah. last. And you know, at the end of the game, Hermitone got a couple empty netters. So. Yeah, right. So, yeah. They're playing real good, and... Their best players are sophomores, so I think uh, Grand Rapids is going to be a very good team the mm-hmm. next couple of years. Yeah. So, good for them. Yes. High school hockey uh, will stay on that uh, vein, if you will. Yeah. It's the uh, end of the regular season, and um, I the first four teams in the rankings, and Blaine's been up there the last month, but uh, Edina, Minnetonka, and Andover have been in the top three all year. And kind of funny, I just got some 
vibes that I think one or two of these teams are not going to make it to state. I think there's going to be some upsets. Oh, really? Yeah, I just I don't know why. Well, I mean, that's not unusual. Not when the top four teams. No, no, no. <laughs> so we'll see because the playoffs are going strong in the cities too. But uh, I think um, WDIO is going to do the championship game, and I, th I heard something they might be doing the semifinal games for 7 AA and 7A. What you station? Heard that WDIO that no, you heard does? Haven't heard. Yeah, I think we'll see. Hmm. But I'll put that out on my, our website, minnesotahockeyconnection.com. Good. If it is. Uh, this weekend, the UMD Bulldogs are at North Dakota. Big weekend for the Dogs. Wow. Now, well, their final three weeks, they I think they got to win four of the six games. North Dakota, they'll be home against Miami, and then they go to uh, St. Cloud State. <laughs> That's a big series up there. Yeah. yeah. But uh, they got to do good up in North Dakota. Had a split with Denver this past weekend, a nice Friday night win, and then Saturday a one nothing loss. Yeah, that goalie did the same thing out in Denver. Yeah. He shut him down one nothing and they got an empty netter, but it was a one nothing game yeah. really. <clears throat> so that's two times this year in four games he shuts him down. My nine covers the all Bulldogs on television. KDAL covers them on the radio. And uh, again, at North Dakota this Friday and Saturday, uh, looks like seven thirty start. Does my nine Pick up those games up there in North Dakota. Well, know? stay tuned. Uh, check your uh, check your listings on that. But okay. locally, my nine carries those games. You know, for, and out of last week, we had a CBS Sports right. on the Denver game. That's why it was the late start right. on Friday, eight o'clock. Right. But uh, uh, seven thirty this Friday in North Dakota, and seven o'clock on Saturday. There you go. So, so um, hey, I was um, I noticed uh, Carson Kuhlman got called up on. Uh, is he Thursday. Still, is he still up? Yep. But he nice. scored his first goal. You know, I didn't catch that. Really? Yes. Did he? I, I put it on our site so you can catch the film of it. That's great. I know uh, Dominic Toninato also yeah, got his first week. So NHL. we got two former UMD That's great. players, and one went to Duluth East High School, and one went to Cloquet High School. Yeah. They both scored their first game, goal in National Hockey League, and you can never take that away from them now. No. Mm -hmm. Their grandkids will know that they scored in the National Hockey League. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. That is. That's yeah. fantastic. And, uh, God, I, I, I didn't hear that. Uh, I know that Carson was called up, but hopefully he stays up and he has yeah. a great career. Second game. It would be nice if we could have somebody uh, on the Minnesota Wild from this area that was doing well. But, uh, <laughs> you know, people have been asking me, I don't know why they ask me, why, uh, you know, what I think of the Wild and if they'll make the playoffs. And I don't think they'll make the playoffs. And what happened? Well, they lost their captain, and they lost probably their best defenseman, at least points-wise, and that hurts. That that's tough. When and they lose... lost their best player on the power play, Dumba. Well, that's where I was referencing Dumba. Yeah. You know, he he was, uh, yeah. And you know, when you lose players like that, you're going to struggle. And I think it was very reckless for Coach Boudreau to come out and say, "Oh, we're going to make the playoffs. Oh, we're going to make the playoffs." Well, guess what, Coach? You're in eighth place, the last playoff spot of the Western Conference, and uh, you're only one point ahead of Colorado. Or, I'm sorry, 60 points. They've got 60 points. They're one point ahead of Colorado, one point ahead of Chicago, one point ahead of Vancouver, <laughs> and only three points ahead of Arizona. And guess who's beating them? Uh, all, you know, I would put... All the teams that are low on the eastern side, like Philly, New Jersey, um, Philadelphia, these are games that we should have won, and we found ways to lose those games. And the game against St. Louis, which is probably the it's the best team out there right now, they won their last 10, I think. They are hot. They're 67 yes. points. They're in sixth in the Western Conference. And we got to play them again next Sunday. They're going to seal a, a playoff spot because they're that good. But Minnesota is not going to finish in the top eight. Uh, Colorado, a point behind. And Chicago and Vancouver, a point behind. I would put my money on Chicago making the playoffs over Minnesota. But I'll put one positive thought on this. Yeah. They're in eighth place playing that bad. So what if they get it together a little bit, and what if Dubnik starts playing good again? So Jerry, you're hopeful. I'm putting the positive 
part there now. now I'm not saying it's going to happen. No. <laughs> now, tonight, the Wild host Anaheim, a 7 o'clock uh, start. Again, we're taping on the 19th. And if you recall, when Anaheim came to town uh, back last month, Anaheim was on this terrible losing streak and got out of it by beating the Wild. And then the Wild have to go to the New York Rangers, to Detroit, come home Sunday night. That's a nationally televised game, 6 o'clock against St. Louis. And then they go to Winnipeg, Calgary. Ooh. They've got to play in Nashville next month, at Ooh. Tampa Bay. Ooh. They play at That's Washington. Five. Hard. Uh, they host uh, Dallas. I'm looking ahead next month. They got some tough games. <laughs> Vegas. They play at Vegas. Okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> I, I don't see it happening, but you, you never oh, know. And even if it does happen, they're going to play the top seed. They're going to play Calgary or Saint, San Jose. and ah, it's, it's tough, man. Right. It's tough. This team is really struggling. And uh, I'll say it again, I'm not a fan of the coach. But For what reason? I just, I, I don't like, you know, on the surface what I see and, and just knowing that his playoff record is terrible. And so if this team does make the playoffs, well, the coach has got a terrible record uh, historically in the playoffs with all the other teams he's been with. And he's been with some good teams, uh, Washington, Anaheim. And uh, I, I'm just not a fan. I just don't, I don't feel confident with Boudreaux as that coach. Here's my thing. Uh, we got a week. I think about a week left, and they can do trades for the trade deadline. All right. You think they're going to make any trades? Well, they're going to have to dump some contracts, and I think Eric Stahl is, is, is one of them. You know, what about these contracts they have with Suter and uh, Parisi? These were 11 year uh, deals, I believe. And 13. Was that what it was? 13? 13. 13 years? Yep. You know, uh, when. And they're do, halfway through. Yeah. You know, when do they. Uh, you know, decide that maybe it's not going to work out as planned. And I'm not saying get rid of them, but, you know, they do tie up a lot of salary cap space. Redo their contracts, maybe? Maybe. Um, I don't know. Do you trade one of the two? I don't do you know. trade them both? But I, they have to okay it. Both of them know, are not, the, no trade this, contracts. This team is, you know, looking to the future, hopefully. Uh, you know, Greenway, Cunning. You know, what about Zucker? Zucker just, just turned He hasn't into, done anything you know, lately. You know, Charlie Coyle. Does Zucker long for home in yeah. Las Vegas? Is there a trade we can do with Las Vegas and give Vegas another Minnesota player? <laughs> then he'll play good, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> just like Niederreiter. Tell you what. Goes, we'll, up, goes to Carolina and gets six goals already. <laughs> yeah. You know, and what has Rask done? He didn't play the other night. No. So it's just, it, it's not good. Uh, the Wild, do they make the playoffs? Well, if they do, they're going to play Calgary. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. The last couple of games I've been there, there's starting to get a few boo birds yeah. out there. And yeah, and rightfully so. And they got, the place is still filled up. Yeah, that's, but how much longer is that going to stay if they start losing? Uh, again, the Minnesota Wild, 59 games in, 27, 26, and 6, 60 points, 5th in the Central Division, 8th in the Western Conference. Number one in the West, Calgary with 79 points, San Jose 2nd with 78, followed by Winnipeg, Nashville, Vegas, St. Louis, Dallas, and Minnesota rounds out the top eight. In the league, Tampa Bay, number one in the league, 94 points, followed by Calgary with 79 Boy, there's quite a gap there between those two. And if you recall, what was it, 2004, Tampa Bay beat Calgary in seven games. Uh, I think that went right. to game seven. Yeah. I think, and, um, wasn't uh, Garrison, UMD player, defenseman, was on that Tampa Bay team? I think he was. Mm, but uh, yeah. I'm just looking at, uh, here's one of the big problems in Minnesota, too. Usually at home, they have one of the best records. Yeah. Home records over the years. And they last did up years. until recently. You know what they are right now? 13, 12, and 5. So they're 500. Yeah. But they're 500 on the road. Come on. Yeah. They got to win at home. Yes. And that's. I mean, plus, you, you, you got, if you want to be up there in the top teams, you got to win on the road, too, like two thirds or 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. But they're not doing either. Geez, they had that 4-1 lead over New Jersey and lost 5-4. Uh -huh. They had a 4-2 lead over, I think, Philadelphia. Yeah. And eh. so that's two they gave away. Eh. It's, like, it's almost like high school hockey. I mean, pros, you don't see it too often. Mm -hmm. But, uh, hey, I don't know. 
Kyle Raw was sent down. Uh, O'Reilly was brought up. He's a veteran, but uh, I don't know. I don't know, understand some of that. I think uh, if you bring a young player, bring him, play him. They're not doing good. Play a young kid that maybe gets a little confidence sure. in that when you send him back and forth. Yeah. He doesn't know where he's going, what he's doing. Well, mean, look what happened with Alex Tuck. They didn't give him playing time. They trade him to Vegas, and he's one of their top players. Again, in the NHL, Tampa Bay's number one in the league with 94 points, followed by Calgary with 79, and San Jose third in the league. Boston fourth, New York Islanders fifth, Winnipeg sixth in the league, Toronto seventh, Washington eighth, Nashville ninth, and Columbus tenth in the NHL. Uh, and the Minnesota Wild, uh, I, I just, I don't see them making the playoffs. And even if they did, they're not going to do anything past the first round. It's Okay, let me tell you a little bit about Alex Tuck for the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. He's their number one scorer this year so far. Yeah. 16 goals, 26 assists, 42 points. Now, he was a first round pick for the Wild. I think he was. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Uh, How does that work out? <laughs> it's not. It's not working out, Jerry. Uh, okay. So the Minnesota Wild, uh, we'll see. But uh, right now, uh, they've got their hands full. full. Uh, the rest of this week, they play Anaheim on the 19th, and then they go to New York, the Islanders on Thursday uh, the 21st, and they'll be at Detroit on Friday the 22nd. Okay. Well, back to high school, just to let you know, um, 7A... Finals will be at Amsoil next Wednesday. So that could be like Hermantown, Denfield, Hermantown, probably. Yeah. Greenway. And then on next day, Thursday night at 7 o'clock, is uh, 7 AA. And that could be East, Andover, Cloquet, Andover. I think Andover is going to get to the finals. Yeah. But you never know. They're kids, yeah. you know, but uh, so yeah. nice thing about up here north that uh, if you can't make it to the game, TV puts it on, and they get good crowds at these games. Good. So even with TV, I mean, that's ama that's what amazes me, but they do that more up here than any place in the state. Well, I'd like to see Denfeld and Hermantown play in that section. That'd final. be nice, yeah. And uh, just a personal preference, I'd like to see Denfeld win that game and go to state. I think a lot of people. <laughs> I don't think they've been to state since 89. Yeah. Was that? I was down back to that in, tournament. Were you? Yeah. Huh. I, went I came down, back two I years went down later. A, I went down against my will. Wow. Well, yeah. I came back two years later, and I went East was playing Hill Murray mm -hmm. in the finals. And uh, we should plan for a snowstorm around that time because there seems to be snowstorms when the right. state hockey tournament starts. So. Well, the semis, I think they're thinking uh, Saturday there's going to be snow too. Yeah. There might be. And that's the semis. And they, they have two teams will be coming up from the cities. And yeah. uh, one will be coming from Cloquet or Rapids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, that 89 season, uh, they played at the old St. Paul Civic Center. They had the clear boards. Uh, they played Rochester, I think, in the opening round, and Zmolek was a defenseman for Rochester. He turned pro. I don't know, did the North Stars pick him? But uh, anyways, uh, Denfelt uh, lost. Oh, the Rochester. Yeah, okay, Denfelt yeah. lost uh, their first game, and I don't know what they did after that. Uh, we weren't paying too close attention after that because, again, I was, I was brought to the state tournament against my will and forced to uh, drink uh, alcohol. No way. Yeah, 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 it happened. Now, who forced you yeah. to go down there? Oh, Some I can't friends? disclose that because— Some friends? Well they, well, they were friends. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But do you remember—you oh. remember the first game, I guess? Uh, barely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was, well, yeah. those were the days, well, my those friend. Those were the days, yeah. I woke up with a dog, <laughs> sleeping with a dog at a strange location in Minnetonka. Seems like we drove forever to get where we were going, and uh, it's kind of a blur. You must have went around and, the loop. Uh, yeah, I had to get up and look for my shoes and my socks that the dro dog dragged away. But you made it to yeah. the state tournament well, in boys we, hockey. We did, That's we good. did, you know, but uh, in Denfeld lost. It would have been nice if they could have won, but uh, again, we're being a little funny here. Uh, you know, Hermantown's got a really good team, but they've got a really good player in this Biondi. Right. He can score. He's exceptional. Yep. Yeah, UMD's going to get a good one. They got a, you don't get too many kids that can score, and this kid can score. There's a lot of work he has to do in other parts of his game, but 
He's a real deal. He is. He's kind of like the natural of uh, baseball here in hockey. And, right. you know, his dad obviously uh, played at UMD and uh, back in the day, but he's... Uh, he's going to score a lot of goals around the net. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's players like that that, you know, you hope make it to the state tournament so they can showcase their skills and uh, people uh, out, you know, in the metro area rather. and during the state tournament can see somebody like that, but uh, I'd still like to see Denton. And there's a lot of talk now that um, he might leave his senior year to go play juniors or go out uh, for the development team out in Michigan. But we'll see. But, I hope uh, he doesn't. Yeah. I hope he doesn't. I will always uh, maintain the position that if you're an elite player, if you're a good player, you're going to be a good player yeah. your final year in high school. You What's don't the rush? need to get to that that, that development uh, I believe level. the same way because you'll never ever look back at that development year as you will your senior year in school you'll with never, your friends never never it'll never match what the senior year in high school can and so but that's just me just like I when I congratulated Ryder Donovan and then I said something thanks for coming back to Duluth East and yeah. you'll never regret your choices there yeah never yeah, yeah. so uh, you're right. So, yeah. Well, you know, you we'll can see. think of a handful of players. And I think of, uh, was it Zach Fitzgerald, Rusty's brother back right. in the day? Right. He left early. And, you know. Western. Uh, he went on, and he was, a, he was a popular player in that league, actually. Uh, I've said the story before. I was visiting Seattle back in 2004. Oh, yeah. He was out there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was sitting in the hotel room, and I was looking at the front of the phone book, because usually they have things of interest around town, and. I saw a, a little deal there, page for the Seattle Thunderbirds, and the featured player was Zach Fitzgerald. <laughs> That's funny. And a photo of him. <laughs> and so, what a small world, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm sure he doesn't regret his career. Uh, but there He's you go. still playing. Isn't He's over something? in Europe. My goodness. Yeah. Well, good for him. Yeah, he's, um, you don't want to fight with him. No, no, no. He was a tough kid. That, yeah. Back when he went to the Western Hockey League, that was a, like kind of a fighting league. Yeah, yeah. That was a tough man league. Yeah. So if you didn't know how to fight, you didn't belong in that league. Mm -hmm. It changed a lot now. But You know, you think of a guy like Tommy Williams. At one time, Duluthian Tommy Williams was the only American-born player in the NHL. I know it's hard to believe. And he's the first one that ever scored 20 points, I heard. American born yeah. and we heard from Roger Godin uh, the current curator for the Minnesota Wild uh, he was at a game I believe uh, the New York Rangers and he was in Vic or no it was Vancouver must have well I can't remember where he was but he uh, he'd heard about this only American born player Tommy Williams and he had a chance to see him play in this heyday but uh, Tommy Williams boy he was one tough cookie yeah so was Butch those are good teams and in Butch Boston. And Butch still is, so don't mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jerry, uh, high school hockey is the focus right now. Right. Uh, for the next, um, you know, we got two weeks. We got playoffs for this week and next week, and then state tournament, uh, 7th through the 9th for double A, and 6th through the 9th for single A. Okay. Down at the XL Energy Center. How did your rankings end up? Where did... Ah, uh... oh, yeah, you can get that right now. In Class AA, I got Edina, number one. Tonka, Minnetonka, number two. That's a place you went and stayed that first time you went to yeah. the field turn. Yeah. Andover, number three. Blaine, number four. St. Thomas Academy, number five. Maple Grove, number six. White Bear Lake, number seven. Moorhead, number eight. Nine is Rosemont, and ten is Eden Prairie. Who's Rosemont playing? They've only got, what, two, three losses? Well, they're in the sections now. They don't know yeah. if they're going to make it, but they, they're they in a section with uh, St. Thomas and Egan. Yeah. So, decent team. St. Thomas will be the favorite in that Okay, section. let's look at this top five. St. Thomas Academy is probably as good as number one Edina. I wouldn't say as good, but they're a very good team. How about Blaine? Is Blaine is as good as he died? I think their first line is as good as any first line in the state. And if their goalie can stay hot, they can win it all. Are those the five best teams in, in the state? Probably, maybe the nation. <laughs> right. But let's see. we got five different sections, too. So they're not in 
So all five okay. of them can make it. Nice. So if they made it, then... Uh, Edina, be... Minnetonka, Andover, Blaine, right. St. Thomas Academy. Right. Wow. Wow. So you got five there. But I always remember back when, uh, I think it was about 2012 or 2012 or 2013, when Jake Randolph in Dom Town and Auto, Duluth East, went down to state and the um, uh, five... The top four seeded teams all lost in the quarterfinal. Yeah, remember that. So, <laughs> sure, <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah. th that'd be nice if you see if, if there was these five teams. I think the excitement really builds up. But then there's a lot of these small teams that want to win and get to stage. Okay, class A. Okay, we got Hermantown number one, Montamina number two, number three mm -hmm. St. Cloud Cathedral. Number four, Totino Grace. Number five, Alexandria. Number six, East Grand Forks. Number seven, Deep River Falls. Number eight, Orono. Number nine, War Road. Number 10, Duluth Denfield. And like I say, Greenway, they're playing real good hockey and really, if they weren't under 500, I'd put them in the top 10 for sure. But uh, I would be scared of playing them. Well, there you go, Denfelt. You made Jerry's top 10 in Class A. There you That's go. That's impressive. Yeah. <coughs> and then, you know, there's going to be about 15 extra teams that want to get into that state tournament, and uh, there's a whole list of them. <laughs> I mean, so this is a great time. And you know there's always going to be some upsets. Always. Right, <laughs> right. So, and uh, with the A class, we got, uh, we're going to have a couple on almost, Two and seven, uh, we got two and four, section four A. We got two and uh, six A. We got three and eight A. So there's a lot of, so we only, we probably only see about three or four of these top 10 teams in the state tournament. Yeah. Because they're all in the same sections. We've come to the final closing moments of the program. And with that, we want to thank the staff at PAC TV. This program is produced. In the studios at PAC TV, downtown Duluth and City Hall. Uh, go to our websites. We've got uh, MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com. We have our Facebook page. Find us on Facebook and like us and our YouTube channel. Yes, uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, some great content there. As a matter of fact, I was looking at some older uh, footage that, uh, of some East players that was put up a few years back. So that's kind of neat. And uh, to your final thoughts. Well, get out and see your local teams, and if not, if you don't have a local team that you're following, go out and there's some big high school hockey games in the next two weeks and sections before state tournament. So, and I'll put some stuff up on our website, MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com, or MNHockeyConnection.com. Well, good. Uh, again, thank you to PAC TV. Uh, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. We'll see you then. See you at the rink. Thank you.